This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. More on them later. Hello everyone, it's Marie and welcome to my channel. ChatGTP is a hot topic and I'm jumping on that hotness. Uh, so yeah, I said ChatGTP the entire video, that's wrong. It's ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence chatbot and you can interact with it and ask it to do stuff for you. I asked ChatGTP to write a 2000 word script about my PhD research, which was about plastic eating marine bacteria. If you want to learn more about my research, you can check out these videos right here. Let's see how that went. Roll it. Plastic pollution is one of the biggest environmental challenges facing our planet today. Every year, millions of tons of plastic waste end up in our oceans, threatening the marine life and ecosystems. But what if the solution to the plastic pollution crisis lies in the very environment it's harming? Scientists have discovered a group of bacteria that can eat plastic and help tackle this global problem. These are marine plastic eating bacteria, and they have the potential to transform the way we deal with plastic waste. What are plastic marine eating bacteria and how do they work? Marine plastic eating bacteria are microorganisms that have the ability to break down plastic waste into smaller pieces. These bacteria use enzymes to break down the plastics and over time the plastics will be completely degraded into harmless substances. That sounds incredible. Where are these bacteria found? Well, these bacteria are found naturally in the ocean and on the surface of plastic waste. They have evolved to feed on the plastic that ends up in the ocean and are very important in maintaining the balance of these ecosystems. Until here, everything was going more or less fine. I'm okay with the definition the fake marine biologist gave on what plastic degradation is. Of course, it's a bit simplified, but I'm okay with that. But what she said afterwards is not 100% correct. We still have not proven for sure that there are marine bacteria in the ocean that can degrade plastic to its most elemental and harmless forms. There has been research showing that there are marine bacteria that can degrade certain types of plastics in the lab under certain certain conditions, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they will do the same in the ocean when they have other food sources available. It's also not completely clear if they completely degrade the plastics or just partially. There is a huge difference between having proof and knowing that something is happening and having data that suggests that something is happening. Because in the last case, there is still some doubt on whether that thing is happening or not. This is why scientists are very reluctant to make black and white statements. That's also the reason why when there is scientific consensus over an issue we should really listen because that doesn't happen that often. So of course I can't speak in the name of all marine biologists and all scientists out there but if I were to be the one interviewed knowing what we know today I would not be so bold to state what the documentary marine biologist stated in that interview. Let's continue. While marine plastic eating bacteria have the potential to revolutionize the way we deal with plastic waste, they cannot solve the problem alone. It's up to all of us to reduce our plastic consumption and properly dispose of plastic waste. How can we reduce our plastic consumption and prevent it from getting in the ocean? There are many things we can do to reduce our plastic consumption. We can bring reusable bags, bottles and containers whenever we go out shopping for food. We can also choose products with minimal packaging and avoid single-use items like for example straws and cutlery. Proper disposal of plastic waste is also important as it prevents it from entering the ocean. Recycling is another important part of the solution. When we recycle plastic, we give it a second life and prevent it from ending up in the ocean. By recycling more, we reduce the amount of plastic waste that needs to be produced, and we help conserve our natural resources. I agree. I agree with pretty much everything that was said here. This is pretty much standard advice that you get from anyone who talks about how to deal with plastic pollution on an individual level. And that's fantastic and great. Individual action is important, it, it can make you feel good, and it can have some impact on a small scale. But that is not what is going to solve the plastic pollution issues we are facing. This can only be done by regulating the biggest polluting companies and industries and by investing in better waste management. And I suspect the sustainable expert would know that and would probably also state it. 
Scientists are still exploring the full potential of marine plastic eating bacteria. They are studying how these bacteria can be used in bioremediation projects to clean up plastic waste from the ocean, and how they can be engineered to break down specific types of plastic. Marine plastic eating bacteria have the potential to transform the way we deal with plastic waste. In the future, we might be able to use these bacteria to clean up the plastic that is in the ocean. And we might also be able to produce plastics that are safer for the environment. With further research and development, marine plastic eating bacteria could be a game changer in the fight against plastic pollution. It's up to all of us to make a difference by reducing our plastic consumption, properly disposing of plastic waste, and help find innovative solutions to keep our oceans clean. That was beautiful. Thank you very much, ChatGTP, and thank you to all the actors and actresses. Me. <laughs> The last scientists sold their research really, really well, and I don't think there's anything factually wrong about what they said. Maybe just a little bit over-optimistic. I am not entirely sure how plastic-eating marine bacteria will solve the issue of the plastic that is already in the ocean. You cannot just throw a bunch of bacteria in the ocean without first extensively researching how that will impact the ecosystems. So I don't see that happening anytime soon. But I am optimistic on how plastic-eating marine bacteria might be used in waste treatment plants. So that I'm optimistic about. Time will tell. I'm impressed with what ChatGTP created. I was expecting worse, to be honest, in terms of storytelling. However, there were some misleading statements thrown in there. It was a little bit overly optimistic. It didn't state any references, obviously, because I asked it to write a script, so I wouldn't be surprised that ChatGTP actually used media outlets for its information rather than research papers. So just out of curiosity, I asked it to write a 500-word text about my research with references as well. The text was again well written, and the references were references I was already familiar with that I in my research, so at least that checked out. However, there were some factual mistakes. For example, PET is not the most abundant plastic used worldwide. It's PE. So the takeaway home message is really, holy crap, anyone now in 30 seconds can create an apparently accurate script about any research topic, even though it might actually not be accurate. And that's scary. If you are planning to use ChatGTP to create any type of research content, please be aware that it might not be completely right. And actually, it might be factually wrong in some cases. So maybe you can use it as a baseline to know where to start looking for information, but don't use it as a final product. Always check what it writes. I hope you hey, enjoyed Maria. this video wait, and wait. I hope hey. to... You know what I think is impressive? What? Learning new skills. Do you know how to do that? Mm -mm. Through today's sponsor, Brilliant. If you are interested in AI, any type of computer science, or even research in general, Brilliant is a great way for you to learn new skills in these fields or improve the ones you already have. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform with thousands of lessons on different fields of science with new ones coming out every month. I've already completed several lessons on math, data analysis, and computer science, all really important for researchers. It's a very easygoing and fun way to learn about these topics, and they have courses for every level, from beginner to advanced. It's also really cool that you get to track your progression and see how much you've already achieved. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash cnme. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. It's a great deal. Go for it. Thank you very much, Brilliant, for sponsoring today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to all my patrons over on Patreon for supporting what I do here. If you want to support what I do, please check out my links down in the description and all my other social media. If you want to join me on my trip to Indonesia in June this year, these are the last days in which you can buy a ticket to join. So check out everything down in the links in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.